I grew up in Port Harcourt. Port Harcourt is a city in, where we are now, it's a city in Nigeria, River State, Nigeria. Um, from when I was seven to 11, there were two dreams that plagued me frequently. Um, the first one was, um, I saw myself as um, the movie hero, Rambo, played by Sylvester Stallone. And well, if you, grew, if, you are, if you grew up in the 80s, Rambo is the equivalent of what Dwayne The Rock is to those of us who are, you know, seeing things now. So I'd see myself, you know, carry out Rambo-like feats where I walk into a military barracks and I will kill everybody <laughs> and I will walk out saving some people I don't know because, you know, it was a cool dream to have. Now, the second kind of dream I had was also more frequent. Um, that dream was, for some reason, I'll be walking on the road and I'll run into a bag of money forgotten by an anonymous person containing lots of dollars. And the dream gets interesting from there because I'll now start spending. I'll start buying houses, I'll start buying cars. Don't forget, I was 11. So in my mind, you know, in an 11 year old with cars and houses and stuff. I used to think I was a freak for having some of those dreams, but I have learned that many of us still have those kind of dreams till date. And I can prove it to you with this one single phrase, 30 billion for the account. <laughs> uh, 30 billion naira, uh, it's, it's from a song by Davido, who is one of Nigeria's best uh, musical artists. 30 billion naira is about $81 million. We all have our own 30 billion naira account dreams till date. So I guess I'm not the only freak here. But the mistake is this. We assume that from the minute we start whatever endeavor we are involved in, that our 30 million naira dream is right in front of us. Unfortunately, that's not the reality. And I would like to use my story and my journey and that of a farmer, uh, a group of farmers, to tell you how you can bring your 30 million naira dream to life. Okay? Um, a client of mine flew me to Kaduna, and this was some years ago. She's, um, she does renewable energy, and she's pretty good at it. So from the excesses, from the profits of her business, she does um, charity work. So she takes some solar energy panels and sets up mi mini grids, mini, e mini electricity grids for communities that have not seen electricity before. So she took me to one of those communities in Kaduna in one of the remote areas. It's a farming community. And I fell in love with some of the things they did there. And here's why. Um, they were all farmers there and they still used very crude tools. You know those hoes, those big giant hoes, good. They used crude tools. They had to deal with the annoyingly hot weather. How many of us have been to the north? See how hot the sun is in northern Nigeria. They had to deal with that. They had to deal with, uh, you know, seasons when there is no rainfall. So they had to provide water for their crops. But the exciting thing to me was that these guys were happy. So after interacting with them, I came to a conclusion. I, you know, I realized why they were happy. It's because they could see the harvest even before they could plant anything. They could see the harvest, they could see the end product in their minds before any seed or any crop has been planted. They knew what the outcome was going to be. They could see um, school fees. You know, they could see buying Korans. They could see um, being able to harvest the crops, sell some of them and have money to buy other things. So they could see all of that. The vision was already clear. Well, some part of it, because along with seeing the positivity, they could see the sun. They could see that they were going to have to look for ways to carry water to their farms. They could see that there, there was suffering alongside the good harvest that they were seeing. So the first point I'm trying to make, we're talking about routines and traditions, is don't, for whatever 30 billion naira dream you have, see the good side, but make sure you see the bad side. Because there is suffering 
alongside your dream. Does that make sense? That's the first thing. Now, um, if I move my ring a little bit, I don't know, I'll try to see if I can show it to you, but if I move my ring, you see a bite mark on my hand. It was given to me um, during a fit of rage by my wife when she was trying to give birth to my first child, Nana. And yes, I was there all through. I'm one of those men. So I was there with her all through. We, um, the annoying cravings for shawarma and uh, unzu by 3 a.m. Unzu is um, clay. 3 a.m. in the morning, I was there with her. The cramps, the pains, the sleepless nights, the annoying smells, I was there. We went all through that together. You know, for men, it's very annoying. Um, I was there and I saw doctors, male doctors, tell my wife to go to the other room because they want to check. <laughs> I went through all of that. And then during the labor pains and everything, the fights, the punches, the biting of my finger and all of that, we survived that. Now, but the interesting part for me was after going through this for about six months after my son was born, this same woman told me she wanted to have another child. I'm like, I don't understand. What is, what is, what's happening? It was too late. She had made up her mind. She had made the choice that she was going to have a second child. Now, so the second thing about this is, as you've seen the vision, as you have seen the good and the bad, you need to make a choice that you will suffer the suffer. You make a choice and you begin to do something because of the choice, two things. So, you choose the vision, you, choose, you see the vision, you choose that you will go through the vision, and then you take action alongside your vision. Are we making progress? Um, I remember I've been consulting for quite some time. I've been close to a decade, but as a company, Excel and Grace Consulting is about six years old. And um, when we started consulting, it was things were good for our country. You know, there was a lot more money going around. So we had about four clients that could actually cover our basic expenses plus profit for the whole year. It was, it was good enough. Okay, so, um, but something happened along the line. We had a change in our politics. And along with the change in politics came with a change in economy. And usually what happens for, with those changes is the first casualties are usually consultants. So we found ourselves from having this volume of revenue to no revenue. It wasn't funny. <laughs> so these are people who had, the, the money was coming in in large chunks and now there was no money coming in. So we had two choices to make. Um, let our baby our new company to either die or find new ways to nurture it, find new ways to groom it. Well, it's been six years and I'm here doing a TED talk, so it means we're doing something. We nurtured it. Good. We found creative ways to still take care of our baby. We found ways to offer our services in smaller doses so that companies can afford to pay for them. The third point I'm trying to make is this. You're going to have to nurture your baby. You're going to have to nurture whatever. It, you, it's, it needs time to grow. There is no human being, there is no man that can get nine women, that can get a child in one month by getting nine women pregnant. It will not work. You're going to have to go through. You're going to have to nurture the baby. You're going to nurture your process. That's the third point I want to make. Um, the fourth point I'd like to make is this. Uh, two farmers, still in that community, two farmers, um, let's call one Musa and call the other one Uche. So two farmers, Uche is more hardworking than Musa. Musa is just a very carefree farmer. And so he plants, he didn't even take time to till the ground properly. He just did some rush work and then through his seeds there. 
of course, they will grow, they will blossom first. Um, the other farmer took his time to dig the ground and plant his crops properly. But then, Musa's crops start to germinate first. Musa's crops start to produce flowers. Meanwhile, Uche's crops have not even blossomed at all. Uche now gets upset and begins to wonder if he's doing anything wrong and shifts his focus from his own farm and begins to look at Musa's farm and begins to complain that his village people are after him. Now, that's something that happens to all of us, and I'll tell you my own story. Um, when I started getting intentional about what I'm doing on social media as a business, Instagram was one of the places I found very interesting. So um, I went there, we started dishing out content, and I began to follow some really interesting brands and businesses, even some people who were business consultants or coaches. So they had been there longer than I had been, so at first, it was exciting to see that, you know, these are the kind of opportunities that exist. But after, I, after some time, I began to notice that, hey, these guys are really way ahead of me. And they were doing things that made me feel like I wasn't even trying at all. So I realized that I'll wake up some mornings, see somebody's post, and my whole day is ruined. The person doesn't even know that I exist. My whole day is gone. The person didn't do it. wasn't intentional, but I just scrolled to, through Instagram, and I look at it, and I'm like, I'm not even doing anything. Now, after I had gone through that depression <laughs> for about a month or two, I actually woke up one morning and I said, look, I need to do something differently. Guess what I did? I unfollowed all those people, <laughs> one by one. Everybody who I knew was giving me sleepless nights. I unfollowed all of them. You know the interesting part? Many of those people now are following me. Why? Because I stopped looking at what they were doing and paid attention to my own hustle. I paid attention to what I was doing. So the fourth thing is this. You're going to have to focus on the work you need to do. There's no point looking around, looking to the left, looking to the right. Keep your attention on where you are working. Pursue where you are going to. Keep your focus. So, you need to see it, the good and the bad. You need to choose it. You need to do it. That's take action. You need to nurture it. And then, you need to keep your focus on it. Thank you very much. <laughs>